Welcome to worship with Tibbetts United Methodist Church. My name is Katie Jones. This service has been recorded for Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021. On this day, we come to the tomb where Jesus's body was laid, only to discover that the stone has been rolled away. God invites us to peer into the tomb. What will we find? Let us center our hearts for this hour of worship. Let us pray. O Holy One, who gives life to the dead and calls formless potential into fullness of being, we feel your tug to realize resurrection. Bust open the cold tomb of made up minds. Massage our hardened hearts into supple softness. Grant us the mind of Christ and the courage of spirit to become the people we were meant to be Show us where we have erected walls of fear and convinced ourselves that they are not only necessary, but sacred. Show us what we are pretending not to know on the sacred path of becoming. We commit to revealing and realizing your kingdom in our homes and houses of government, in our boardrooms and business deals, in our policymaking and in our peacemaking, and in the name of the ever rising Christ, Amen.
Sarah and Esther, and I am so excited because this is Ezzy's first Easter, and she has never heard the story of Easter before. So I have a way that I love to tell this story using eggs, and this morning we colored our Easter eggs. Here they are. And so I am going to share with Esther for the first time the story of Easter. Okay, are you ready? On Good Friday, Jesus died. And all of his friends and disciples were heartbroken. They took his body and they laid it in a tomb. Then, three days later, something happened. Mary, Jesus' friend, went to the tomb to look for Jesus' body so that she could prepare it with spices for burial. Now, when Mary got to the tomb, the big stone that was the door in front of the tomb had been rolled away. It was rolled away. Mary was a little scared, but she went and she looked inside. And when she looked inside, she saw <gasps> the tomb was empty. Whoa, did you see that? The tomb was empty, just like that egg. The tomb was empty. Jesus was not there. Jesus had risen. Isn't that so amazing? Did you ever think that would happen? That Jesus who had died actually came back to life and rose again. And this teaches us that all things are possible with God and that God loves us. And no matter what happens to us, no matter how sad or hard life gets, there is always new life. Isn't that amazing? Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that the tomb was empty. We are so grateful to know that Jesus still lives and walks among us and teaches us how to love and that death is not the end, but there will be new life for all of us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah! Can you say Happy Easter? Happy Easter! When we share our gifts, ministry happens. At Tibbetts, we're blessed with musicians whose love of music enhances our worship experience. Tibbetts ministries are made possible through contributions of members and friends, praying for one another, being present in our community, offering financial support, and serving through outreach. You can participate in the life of Tibbetts through worship, Bible study, joining our Zoom fellowship time, volunteering for outreach missions, and financial giving. You can give financially online or mail a check to the church financial secretary at 3940 41st Avenue Southwest 98116. Today, we give thanks for our music ensemble and the gift of Let It Rise. Songs of the Lord rise. 
among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. gospel reading for today comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, Please tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said these things to her. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This morning I am imagining approaching the tomb. If you're watching this service, you have come to the tomb. We've read the gospel story of resurrection. We remember the first Easter morning. 
And we come to the tomb to see for ourselves if the stone is still rolled away, if the tomb is still empty, if there is still hope, if Christ still lives and walks among us. We need to see for ourselves, especially after the year that we have experienced. We need to see for ourselves if God really does the impossible, if God makes a way out of no way, if God can transform suffering into deep understanding, grace, and love. We need to see for ourselves, but we've heard the stories of God's people before us throughout this season of Lent, stories of wilderness living and obedience to God, stories of how these God characters went to the tomb for themselves. Perhaps it's these stories that keep us coming back every Easter to see if the tomb is still empty. We heard the story of Noah, living in the wilderness flood, relying on nothing but obedience to God. Forty days of rain, the sky finally clears, and Noah approaches the tomb. He peers inside and sees it's empty. He hears God call his name, and he turns around, and there is a rainbow. We've heard the story of Abram and Sarai living in a childless wilderness relying on nothing but obedience to God. In their old age, God gives them new names. Abraham and Sarah approach the tomb, peer inside and see it's empty. God calls their name, they turn around and there is their baby, Isaac. We've heard the story of Moses living in his desert wilderness alongside his people, relying on nothing but obedience to God called to the mountaintop, God extends a new covenant. Moses approaches the tomb, peers inside and sees it's empty. God calls his name, he turns around and from the mountain peak, he can see a glimpse of the promised land. We've heard the story of the Hebrew people living in serpent wilderness, relying on nothing but obedience to God. Covered in snake bites, God invites them to look suffering in the eye. The Hebrew people approach the tomb, peer inside, and see it is empty. God calls their name. They turn around, and they are healed. They live. We've heard the story of God's people living in wilderness exile after the destruction of the temple, relying on nothing but obedience to God. The prophet Jeremiah speaks. The exiled approach the tomb, peer inside and see it's empty. God calls their name and the law is written on their hearts. They know God within themselves, without the temple. We've heard the story of Mary Magdalene, living in wilderness grief, relying on nothing but obedience to God. She watched in agony as Jesus was crucified, murdered. Early in the morning on the third day, she approached the tomb where Jesus' lifeless body had been laid, and she sees the stone has been rolled away. Immediately, she calls the disciples, and Peter and the unnamed disciple come running. Something is not right. Something has happened, and they must go and see. John's Gospel offers explicit detail of their arrival at the tomb, peering inside before going in, finding that the tomb is empty, and then returning home, while Mary is left there alone, weeping, overwhelmed with grief. Her mind is set on one thing and one thing only, finding Jesus' body. When a man appears, she is so distracted by her grief, she assumes it's the gardener. She only wants information. Where did they take him, she asks. And then she hears her name, Mary, and she sees it is Jesus standing before her. She recognizes him. 
This story of Mary on that first Easter morning resonates so deeply with me. When I was experiencing the darkness of divorce, I remember begging and pleading with God to just reveal God's self. And I knew exactly what I needed. For God to tell me where the life I had imagined for myself had gone so that I could go and find it. And then, there in the darkness, God spoke my name. And suddenly I could see God had been beside me. I did not need to go searching for my old life. God was right here. I had been made new. Through my colossal failures, paralyzing fear, and deep regret and shame, I had been made new. When have you searched for God only to discover God was already with you? Have you had a personal experience of resurrection, a time when you were convinced, confident, certain that your life was over? And then something happened, and then you were changed. These stories call us to approach the tomb again, to see for ourselves. When we discover the tomb is still empty, will we be able to perceive God's presence, to hear God's voice, to see Jesus among us here and now? Jesus is here. The tomb is empty. Our ego death will not be the end of us, but the beginning. We have received God's grace. May God again make us new. Amen.
Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take my deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. Let us continue to God in prayer. God of resurrection, how is it possible that death is not the end of us? How is it possible that in all of our sin you redeem us? How is it possible that in all of our navel gazing you lift our eyes to the hills? How is it possible that in all of our hatred and greed and violence, you extend grace and mercy and forgiveness? How is it possible that in all our pain, you bring justice? How is it possible that in all of our disappointments and regrets, you bring new possibilities and new dreams? This Easter day, we stand in awe and wonder and gratitude that with you, all things are possible. Even the things our minds are too small, too distracted, too narrow to imagine. When we do not know how we will possibly live another day, you breathe into us the breath of life. And our weary souls ignite with passion and possibility. We begin to see the light, to experience it, to embody it. You call us to rise up out of our tombs, our tombs of self-hatred and shame, to step out into the morning light and see a new day. Give us vision, O oh God, to not only imagine a world made new, but to live as though it is already so. To live as though you walk among us, as though you are here. We pray all these things in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. God's love endures forever. For God is good, God is above all things. God's love endures forever. God's love endures forever For the life that's been reborn God's love endures forever Sing praise, sing praise Sing praise, sing praise praise. Forever God is faithful Son, God's love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. God's love endures forever. Sing praise. May you find that the tomb is still empty. Thanks be to God, Christ is risen. Amen.
Hi, my name is Betsy Wharton, and here are the announcements for today. From the outreach team, Tibbetts is scheduled to host the Welcome Table Lunch again on Saturday, April 17th. Since the pandemic began, the Welcome Table has been serving about 150 guests each week. One third are experiencing homelessness, one third are elderly or disabled, one third are low income, and many are still unemployed. We need your help to provide a satisfying and nourishing meal to the guests. This free lunch is served at the Body of Christ Church on Southwest 102nd Street near McClendon's in White Center. Body of Christ Church members will take your donation from your car since we are not serving the meal on our own again yet. Hygiene items and clothes are also provided for guests to take. Men's clothing, backpacks, and all types of hygiene items are always in short supply. These can be taken any Saturday to the Body of Christ Church between 11 and 11.30 a.m. The Thursday Announcements email has a link you can use to, for signing up to bring food for the lunch, and there will be places in West Seattle you can drop food off ahead of time if you're not able to deliver to the welcome table that Saturday. If you have any questions or need help signing up, please contact Dottie Phelps. From the welcome team, we're inviting you to share your thoughts and reflections around our Lenten worship series. For the past few weeks, we've shared a set of questions in the weekly announcements on Thursdays and on Sunday morning in the worship email. If you feel inspired, please send your comments to Lindsay Johnson or join our fellowship hour every Sunday at 11 a.m. We're excited to hear from you. From the relationship team, we know COVID-19 vaccinations are now very expanded to many more groups. And for those who are in need of a safe ride, to get to an appointment, our spirit movers are happy to provide one. Please contact Charlie Schoeffer or Ben Allen White. If you need help scheduling your vaccination, please call the, or email the church office. We hope you'll visit the church website, tibbetsumchurch.org, for the latest updates on events, worship services, and ways to connect with your Tibbets family. The worship tab on the left side is where you can see all of the worship videos, past and present. On the news and events tab, there are posts about all of the current activities with Zoom links for each one of them. Every Sunday we have fellowship at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday we have Bible study at 10 a.m. Note that Bible study is taking a break on April 7th and will resume again on April 14th. On the subscribe tab, you can see how to receive our weekly announcements emails, which are sent out on Thursdays. The Give tab shows how you can donate to Tibbets online. If you have a prayer request that you'd like to have shared in a worship video, please email the church office and let us know. If you'd like to be on the prayer chain, please let us know that and we'll be glad to include you there. Have a wonderful Easter and a blessed week ahead. Bye.